7 DZFE, the Master's Touch, brings you the music of the Masters and the Master's Word. We are glad we are able to touch you in both ways. Fafi's Maestro Filipino, a focus for music with a connection to home. For this edition, I'm Tiffany. It is rare enough to find a thriving chamber ensemble in Manila, but the Ripiano Ensemble must be the rarest of the rare. It is the only chamber ensemble in Manila devoted to new music. And to top it all, it is what is known as a Pierrot Ensemble a group that takes its configuration of flute, clarinet, violin, cello, piano, and female singer from the forces required of Arnold Schoenberg's iconic 1912 Pierre Lunaire. Following the debut of Pierre Lunaire, Pierre ensembles became the seed for many groups championing new music in the 20th century. Currently, the Piano Ensemble is the only Pierre Ensemble in the region. Ripiano made themselves at home in our studio, showcasing the variety of their repertoire in four offerings. They are, in the order we'll be hearing them, an arrangement of Nicanor Abelardo's Ang Aking Bayan by Ripiano Ensemble's conductor, the composer Alexander John Villanueva, songs from a setting of Pierre Lunaire by Max Kowalski, an arrangement by Johannes Schulhorn, an excerpt from Schoenberg's Pierre Lunaire, of course, and finally... An arrangement also by A.J. Villanueva of 19th century composer Julius Benedict's high flying aria, La Capinera. Ripiano members Patricia Poblador, violinist, Stephanie Quintin, soprano, and conductor A.J. Villanueva also joined me for an interview to talk about how the young, newly formalized ensemble went from zero to 60 in a matter of months. <laughs> It started as an unofficial group that performed for the Manila Composers Lab, which has been around since around 2010, I believe. Yes. Uh, the Manila Composers Lab is based in UP, and it's also dedicated to giving composers in the Philippines and Southeast Asia a venue to have their works performed. So most of us, um, if not all of us in uh, Ripiano, we were performers for that group. Mm-hmm. And in 2015, we decided to just formalize everything. Make, make ourselves a legitimate group. We had our first concert uh, February of 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, not all of us here right now are part of the original oh, members see, of the ensemble. Okay. Even me as the conductor. <laughs> so when did you come in? Well, th- th- this group uh, went in around uh, maybe eight, May 2015. Okay. We were preparing for a workshop in Hong Kong, the, the modern ensemble. By the Mo- Hong modern Kong Academy. New, modern Academy of the Hong Kong New Music Ensemble. So before going to the workshop, we formalized the membership, and this membership is still existent up to now. The Piano Ensemble was founded by Dr. Jonas Baez. He's a composition teacher in UP, and since he founded the Manila Composers Lab, he also spearheaded the creation of the Ripiano Ensemble. Yeah. So he, it's it's really his fault. <laughs> In a nutshell, hi sir, if but, you're hearing this. Uh, but, the, but the first concert of the Ripiano Ensemble, February of 2015, they performed the the first piece of Piero de Nier. Monstruk. And then posted it on YouTube. And then William Lane of the Hong Kong New Music Ensemble saw it and asked us to come to the Modern Academy to further study the piece, the oh, whole I thing. See. So that's the connection between oh, us. So this piece really is the key. <laughs> so this Social piece. media, <laughs> the, This piano really is the key to our conception and to our, I guess, our success so Some far. The Modern Academy is a, a contemporary music workshop hosted by the Hong Kong New Music Ensemble. They do it yearly. Um, they invite uh, musicians, as in performers, composers, and conductors from all over the world to come to Hong Kong and uh, study contemporary repertoire techniques, composition. 
we were given a scholarship. We were very fortunate to be given a scholarship mm-hmm. to go to that. And that was officially our first gig. Yeah. <laughs> our first outing. Yeah, yeah. our first uh-huh. o- Actually, in our in that in our present configuration, that was our first performance together. It was nerve wracking. Uh, scary. It was a week of, uh, full of uh, rehearsals and workshops. Right. So at the first day, literally from the airport, we went there and rehearsed right away. Mm-hmm. And read so, through Schoenberg, Schoenberg, <laughs> Pierre Lunaire, and which uh, which is the the origin of what we are actually. Right. Mm-hmm. And. Um, all of us were nervous. nervous. We really, were, really nervous. Apart from being young, there there isn't really anyone that teaches contemporary techniques in Manila. So everyone else in the modern academy was from, let's say, German trained mm-hmm. or at least exper- more experienced. So we were nervous. But then the day after, uh, we had our first concert. AJ wrote a piece for us. We premiered that. And we also did a piece by Dr. Jonas Baes. And that was very well received. Mm-hmm. And... I think that gave us a big boost. We and since cool. uh, the Repiano and Som is uh, the performing arm of the Manila Composers Lab, we really uh, center on Southeast Asian contemporary music. So bringing the Filipino repertoire to Hong Kong was one of our... Uh, yeah, it, it gave us a really big boost. Mm-hmm. And it also, in a way, it did promote local contemporary music quite a bit. They, were, they found it very refreshing. Sí, sí. 
Your piano is dedicated to new music. Yes, 20th century, 1900s, especially influenced, heavily influenced by Arnold Schoenberg uh, and all the composers after him, Stravinsky, Messiaen, and uh, uh, here in the Philippines we have uh, Dr. Jose Maceda, Dr. Ramon Santos, Dr. Jonas Baez, uh, Professor Chino Toledo, who were my teachers uh, in composition. And right now um, there is... Not really a big group, but a, a number of us comp young composers dedicated to enriching the local contemporary music scene. In one of the write-ups I read, you were described as being determined to perform new music however it is received. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that write up? Well, uh, maybe that's true. But so far, we've had audien local audiences from... From UP, Diliman, we've also done concerts in UPLB. We recently did a Paco Park concert. We are, we're surprised that people actually attend. <laughs> Pleasantly yes. surprised. Pleasantly yes, surprised, of course. That's true. Uh, the repertoire we do actually was have been well received. Mm -hmm. The arrangements for Kundiman and Italian arias, and as well as uh, the the Schoenberg. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the Schulhorn arrangement of the Pierre Lunaire were all really well received by the people. And uh, we are happy that things like this are well received. Uh, because before, uh, we uh, personally, I, I also perform uh, other contemporary music uh, in the past, before the Ripiano Ensemble even existed. But before, it was really difficult, difficult for the people to absorb what they are hearing. So we are happy that they receive it very well. And uh, it turns out that they are happy also to seeing us perform. Uh, one of the compliments we always have is that um, in the European Noon Song, we have synergy. And uh, this energy that all of us have, uh, they say, reflects to the audience. Mm -hmm. They see it, they hear it. And I think that's one of our strengths, besides being musically trained, Besides that, the synergy we have with each other, the camaraderie and the friendship I think we have with each other reflects to our performances and to the audience as well. So how do you think is the best way to advocate new music? Well, so far we started with our repertoire. Um, apart from doing that quote-unquote classical, classic, or classic contemporary music like Schoenberg, mm -hmm. um, we've been doing our own arrangements of pieces that are already well known. So we've been, we've done concerts in which we arrange Filipino kundiman and Italian aria with contemporary techniques. It's it's like an it's an easier way in, I suppose, mm, for an audience. Good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and those have been very well received because of the familiarity. I think it's nice that there's a mm. melody because usually that's what <laughs> yeah. that's what a tonal a tonal melody. Something recognizable. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
for 10 years now. Personally, my style is that uh, I, I, foc I still focus on melody um, so that the people can uh, still follow something because uh, melody has something to do with dialogues. And uh, dialogues are what people always want to find in music. Mm. The poetry also, aside from the, the melody. Uh, Filipinos have uh, this tradition of poetry in, in Kundiman as well. Uh, and Harana. And uh, this is one of the things that we have as the Ripeno and Sam, especially with a singer around, mm -hmm. with Steph. With Steph. And this is one of the connections we have with, with the people, especially with Filipinos, mm -hmm. that uh, we have, a, as I said earlier, a dialogue with the melodic lines and uh, the poetry that we have reflecting Kundiman and at the same time connecting the Kundiman to the works of Arnold Schoenberg's Piero Donner and all those pieces that have the song and poetry in them. Maybe, Steph, you can shed some light into yeah. that. Yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the Piero Donner, it was hard for me as a singer to learn the piece because I can see the notes plotted in the staff, but it has an X below it, so I cannot sing the exact pitch. So... The only thing that I do probably as a singer is to approximate. But then, unfortunately, Schoenberg has a composer's note in front that you cannot add anything to it, and then you cannot, <laughs> um, you cannot interpret it yeah. based on the lyrics. Mm -hmm. It's a very technical piece. And mm -hmm. um, the idea of Schoenberg in his Pierre Lunaire is that everything is written in the score already. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to add any interpretation. Um, he wrote the, uh, the whole Pierre Lunaire uh, thinking about the imageries of the poetry uh, by Albert Grimaud. And um, in uh, Arnold Schoenberg's Pierre Lunaire, his imagery is for me, groundbreaking, because he has a, a tonality, 12 tone. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the, the imageries are very vivid, just within the music, mm. for the r r piano and some. And maybe for me as a composer, it's a really important piece for the 20th century. Yeah. It's a piece that, according to one scholar, encompasses all contemporary music until now.
technically, th this music is over a century old. <laughs> but I think it is nice to explore something that isn't normally done here. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe one of the things that uh, excites us is, uh, as individual musicians, we learn so much from, from the music that Absolutely. we study. And I suppose what's also nice is with new music, there is always something new, new. <laughs> coming. <laughs> so there will always be new works, new techniques, new colors to explore. And it's, it's nice to be part of, always be part of something, like creating something new. I think one of the best ways to, to <laughs> invite people to listen to new music is that, especially, this is especially for Filipino listeners, mm -hmm. Melody is not the only music element. Harmony is not limited to the seven tones of a C major scale. There is a bigger world out there for music. And exploring that is both liberating and educating and even refreshing. Uh, listening not just to melody and not just to pitch is, I think, a good start for a Filipino listener. One way to um, help the audience understand our music is um, by explaining it to them. So actually in our concerts, we try to give an introduction to the piece because it's really hard for a person to understand Sprechstimme, mm -hmm. right? So we have to give a short background or mm -hmm. history about the piece. Maybe we can put it in perspective. The European Ensemble is, is forward-looking. But um, if we look back into music history, Beethoven, for example, his music was also uncomfortable during his time. And he was also forward-looking. And so um, maybe the, the place for this kind of music is for, well, yeah, it may be uncomfortable uncomf for some um, if people are looking for solace or something peaceful. Maybe this kind of music they shouldn't listen to this kind of music if they have that mindset that music is just for peace or for relaxation because music has much more function than just being a background for a coffee shop or <laughs> whatever. Music is not really for purely for relaxing or for something peaceful. It is something that uh, we should look into for us to see uh, the world in a different perspective. So we are like giving you a different perspective of the world. Yeah, um... I think what we are doing as musicians or as artists are helping people question this troubled world, <laughs> especially with new music because you hear dissonances, atonality, etc., etc. Clashes. Yeah. When you listen to new music, you try to question things and you become critical of what's happening around you. It's not something you should listen to passively, I yeah. think.
the Ripiano Ensemble in the last of four offerings performed in our studio. In reverse order, they were A.J. Villanueva's arrangement of Julius Benedict's La Capinera, an excerpt from Arnold Schoenberg's Pierre Lunaire, before it, songs from the Pierre Lunaire setting of Max Kowalski, arranged by Johannes Schulhorn, and first of all, A.J. Villanueva's arrangement of Nicanor Abelardo's Ang Aking Bayan. And you also heard an interview with Ripiano members Alexander John Villanueva, conductor, Stephanie Quintin, soprano, and Patricia Poblador, violin. Keep an eye on this passionate young ensemble. The Ripiano Ensemble is online on Facebook, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And that's all for this Maestro Filipino, a pop-up feature for fine music in our locale. I'm Tiffany. Thanks for listening. Bye.